This second part of the content library tutorial will focus on really just showing you my setup and how I've kind of created a almost like a duplicate library system based off the My Daz Studio or My Daz 3D library fo folder system that um, that's sort of the default for Daz Studio. So I just want to show you what my system looks like. And then in the third part of this tutorial series, we'll, we'll, I'll actually walk you through how to manually install files. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, but I use a um, automation software called Alfred, which if you're a Mac user, I definitely recommend checking into it. It's freaking fantastic. Um, it helps you quickly access things uh, in the fastest way possible. So what I did was um, I set myself up an automated sequence of organizing my DAS assets. And so um, basically uh, those are will just pop up with the folder systems that I want to look at. Oops. And normally it will actually pop up and in, in this organization. It'll look just like this most of the time, but um, I was messing with the files earlier, so it's not showing that. Anyway, um, so there's a few things. If, if I, um, another disclaimer, if you see something in here that looks freaky, um, I've just recently fixed a bunch of issues that I had when I was first testing out how to change file systems and where files go and all of that. So I made a lot of mistakes and I'm hoping with this video to help you avoid some of those mistakes. But um, again, this is my external hard drive and this is my main DAS 3D library that I download all files to from the DIM uh, from that install manager we were just looking at. And here I basically just install and don't touch anything. Um, I also have my runtime uh, folder in here. It used to be inside of my DAS Connect, which was causing problems. And then it was in another place that I've forgotten already. I just moved it out of there and I dumped it into my DAS 3D library because it's on my external hard drive. And I got all of that run, all of those runtime folders off my computer uh, to free up space. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but I just want to show you, this is what you would typically see if you're looking at your MyDAS 3D library folder on your own computer. Um, some of these things may be different. You may not see all of these. I've actually probably added a few things um, in the past. Um, like there's probably some weird stuff in here that shouldn't be, but um, I'm still kind of organizing and cleaning things up from all of my <laughs> past mistakes. The other folder I created myself on my external hard drive is here. Uh, is here. The um, I just call it AA Daz Library. You can call it by your name, or you can say my library, or it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you're calling it out in the right places. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, in my case, AA just stands for my business name, Authors Assembler. So I name it that because I just remember more easily that that's my stuff, not the stuff coming from the Daz Studio file system. So what I do when I first install something, whether that's manually or through the Daz install manager, is I will actually go find out where it it loaded to or where it installed to. And a one quick way to do that is to actually go into that file system in the content library pane and say, I want to look for um, maybe the horse. Uh, you can right click on it and go to browse to folder location. And it will show you that it's sitting on my external hard drive here in my uh, DAS 3D library folder. So that's an easy way to find anything uh, in like where your file locations are. And a lot of times you really do need to go find where something is located. So once I find it in there, I will go and actually um, look for it 
Um, or actually, let me just do that one more time. So we're going to browse to that file location and I'll just pop it down here. Then I will go inside and look at the files. I'll look at, you know, there will be something different no matter what you've got. So let me just show you the difference even just with these two items here. You've got um, a lot of different files here. Poses, materials, equipment, and armor for the horse too. Here you've got um, sh shapes is another one that you might find. Uh, characters. So um, in this case, those fo folders, those subfolders that you'll find in each of these main item asset folders, it, are the, it's always going to be changing. It's always going to be something different. What I do is I will actually copy the whole folder over and into my own file system. So in this case, if I was moving the horses over, I would actually put it in my animals section. And I can even put it in a subfolder too. Let's say I want a dragons folder. In fact, that's what I do have here. I have dragon three, and then I have hellborn dragon three, and then another sub dragon. So in the case of the horse, if I was wanting to move that, and that's exactly what I did previously, um, I would look at just those, um, that that whole folder, I'd probably dump the whole thing over. I'd just hit copy and then paste it over here into my file system. And that usually works uh, a treat. It usually works really well. Uh, every once in a while, I'll run into an issue and then I've got to troubleshoot it. But in the, in the vast majority of cases, this seems to work pretty well to just pop over things the way I want them. And to give you an example of why I do this, uh, let's look at figures. Uh, a lot of the figures will have an ungodly number of makeup choices and things like that. Like for example, with Albany, I found that a lot of her stuff was kind of here and there and everywhere. And then goes for a lot of different things. Um, not just figures, but other types of props and uh, environments and things like that. And so I found that I was getting really frustrated. There were things out of place or they'd be in the weirdest spots that wouldn't make any sense to me. And, and it was wasting a lot of my time. So I took a day and reorganized everything into little subfolders so that I could flip to stuff really fast. And I, I really am so glad I did that. It just made a huge difference. Um, it looks like my files are, actually I can't remember where I'm at. Um, let's take a look at Erica, for example. Uh, particularly for this character that I actually have loaded in the window, she um, has a lot of parts. She's got tattoos, she's got, especially for the mermaid side of her, she's got a lot of um, body attachments, uh, tail stripes, tail color, web color, all sorts of things. So it's it's been a lifesaver doing, doing it this way. Uh, so I recommend taking the time before you get a large, a, a, before you buy so many assets that your library becomes unwieldy and it would take forever to do this kind of thing. And then once you start out doing it, you've got everything set up the way you want it. You've, you can organize it as you go, as you purchase items in the store. And when we're looking at these items over here in the store, Let's just take again uh, another look at Albany, for example. You can see uh, her different eye colors and whatnot. And when you're making changes and you're moving things around, a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Um, you may have to go up here to the very top Daz Studio formats and hit refresh. If you find that your items are just not showing up in the window, it just like you know there's things there that should be in a subfolder but they're just not showing up for some reason. Um, you can often fix that by going to a higher tiered um, folder or subfolder and hit refresh. And then another way to update some things if you are finding you've got some issues and are just not seeing what you should be seeing, there's a couple of things you can do. You can scan known directories for files. 
um, and you can just hit accept and or select these two items. I'm not really exactly sure what they all do. And the other thing you can do is pop over here to content database maintenance and re-import your metadata. I do that every once in a while. You can also reset your database, but you want to make sure you back things up before you do that. Um, so if you're ever finding that you've got some corruption in your files or everything's acting really wonky, and this might be uh, one of the, sol the solutions that you might try. Uh, so I think we will stop here with this particular video. Um, hopefully this information will help you kind of get started and we'll talk more uh, as we go along in this series of tutorials. Mm -hmm.